Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm just here to do my first book review, um, so I might as well just get straight into it, yeah? Um, so yeah, today the book that I'll be reviewing is called Love in the Time of Cholera. Now it's written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, he's quite a famous author and he's well known in the literature community, in the writing community. Uh, he's also quite well renowned across the world, I'd say, uh, for two famous books, yeah. Uh, the first one being uh, 100 Years of Solitude, which earned him a Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, not that the Nobel Prize is a measure of how good a piece of writing is, but uh, when you do win one, it does raise a few eyebrows and turn a few heads, you know. Uh, as it, it's, it's akin to winning a championship, essentially, in some sports, you know, so it is a great achievement if you are awarded one. Um, the second book that he's well known for is the book I'm holding today, uh, that being Love in the Time of Cholera. Now, uh, Marquez is... Uh, he's a uh, Spanish writer, so he, he's from Colombia, and his works are then translated to English. Um, and he's best well known for pioneering this field of literature, this, this kind of genre of literature called magic realism. Now that may seem kind of convoluted and complex or, or obscure, uh, you know, the, the term magic realism, but what it essentially means um, is a style of narrative, a style of writing, which takes the uh, kind of seemingly mundane, everyday details of life, the things which we overlook, and it takes them and it seeks to magnify them and glorify them and really bring out the, the essence and the beauty in them. Um, and I think Gar Garcia does a really, really, really good job of doing this because uh, his works are actually quite beautiful to read and they're actually true uh, when, you, when you take a step back and you look at them. You know, Garcia makes you appreciate things like walking in the rain uh, after a sun shower, you know, it makes you appreciate things like the smell of the rain evaporating off the curb, it makes you appreciate things like hugging somebody at night, you know, or, or a cold tea or a warm tea or a, on, on, on a cold day, you know, a warm coffee on a cold day, you know, your friend's company, these simple kind of everyday uh, things that we take for granted. Uh, Garcia seeks to magnify them, make them profound, make them holy and sacred, you know, and that's what I love about his writing, what I love about this book in particular. Uh, and that is what really is, magic realism essentially is. So he's regarded as being the pioneer of this of this genre, and uh, he does a great job of, of it. So um, what this book is essentially about is uh, it's essentially just a love story, a really, really, really uh, beautiful love story. And um, this book, in its essence, in its DNA, is pure romance. Um, that's what it is in its fiber. It is when you read it, you want to. Uh, cry with the characters, you want to bleed with the characters. When you read the book, you want to fight for the characters, you want to jump for joy sometimes for the characters, you know. You get so taken into their story and you can relate to their story in, in such um, strong ways that, you know, you're, you're uh, unable to really uh, tear yourself away from it. So every emotion they go through, you kind of feel it as well in, in parallel. Um, and that's, that's really amazing. That's why uh, essentially I love reading and, and books and good narratives because uh, you can take these parallels in your life and you can, uh, you can, you can see them inside the book itself, you know. You can take lessons from the books and you can see how they apply in your life. You can almost see similar themes in your life taking place that you've read in a book or, or later on um, you read it in a book, things which have happened to you. So um, the book is, is quite amazing. Uh, as I said before, it's pure romance and it's pure love. It's, it's love taken to its ultimate extreme, you know. Aside from it being taken to a point of of, of violence, um, it's taken, it's almost taken there, you know, it's taken to obsession. Now, I'm, I'm babbling on a little bit about what the book is, is, is um, essentially in its core, however, what, it, what the narrative is about is uh, three main individuals who are tied in this kind of interesting relationship. So the first two characters are Fermina Daza and, uh, um, uh, bleh, sorry, Fermina, <laughs> Fermina Daza and Florentina Ariza are the first two characters and these two individuals uh, fall in love with each other um, in late adolescence, okay? So um, what, what, what happens essentially is that uh, without spoiling the plot, just giving you some hints, um, Florentina Ariza sees this beautiful girl, Fermina Daza, uh, reading one day with her auntie or practicing music or something with her auntie in a garden. So he decides to come and sit across the road um, under this kind of tree and, and, he, and, he, and, and using this guise of reading, um, he sits there and just waits for her to walk past every single day. And then when she would walk past, he would kind of sneak a look and then go back to his reading. And he would do this at nauseam over and over and over again just to see a look, just to see, just to get a glance of this girl that he, um, that he's fallen in love with, that has caught his eye. And then she obviously catches, you know, uh, he obviously catches her eye as well at the same time. And um, she begins noticing this boy, you know, and one day he finally gets the courage to say something to her and, and um, things go well for him and, and they fall deeply, deeply in love. And 
the way they fall in love is quite beautiful. It's, it's love for love's sake. It's love without any strings attached. They fall in love with each other's souls and each other's minds and each other's spirits. And they don't fall in love with some of the accessory things such as wealth and power and status. You know, they fall in love in this very teenage kind of innocent, um, beautiful way, this very pure way. Um, which in many cases is obscured as we get older and older and some of the things which society puts on us or the, 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 the kind of life expectations start taking a hold of us. So um, Florentino Riza is not necessarily the most ideal and like kind of masculine person, you know, he's slender and skinny and shy and reserved, but he has a heart like nobody else, you know what I mean? Essentially he is... Um, Uh, sorry about that, my phone just started ringing. I have no control over that. Um, but yeah, what I was saying before is that Florentino Riza is just like this, you know, he's not the stereotypical kind of ideal man or whatnot, you know. Um, but yeah, they fall in love and they fall in love for the right reasons and um, they, they have this really, really great time together and then he proposes to her and then unfortunately they break up for, for reasons that you, which you'll find out if you read the book. Um, however, she essentially turns and she um, starts dating and then eventually... Um, marries uh, the polar opposite of, of, of Florentino Ariza, you know, she marries Giovanna Lorbino and um, her life then is then, um, uh, goes on from then onwards. So uh, what uh, Marquez does in this book is that he draws this parallel between uh, sickness and love, you know, disease and love and he, and he seeks to really demonstrate, which, well he does demonstrate that love can strike you down like a disease, it can be debilitating, it can cripple you, it can it can tear you to bits and it can take a whole lifetime for you to recover from this love, from this affliction. And um, that's really the most heart aching part of this book is really just the, the, the way that this uh, story progresses over time and the way that love is held in the heart of this uh, one individual. Um, it's actually really, really, really amazing. It's also inspiring and it makes you want to be a better person to be straight, straight, to be straight up with you guys right now. Um, it makes you just appreciate things in a different way. And... Um, see people in a different light too and see people in their really really just people in their importance and in their, in their in their divinity um not necessarily just the, in their faults okay um so <clears throat> marquez does a really really good job of doing this um pushes this idea of pure romance and it, it's 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 um, a, a joy to read essentially if you're after something which is um going to take you along the ride it's not like corny or cheesy you know it's things which are associated with romance typically in the in this in our, in our contemporary um, state it's it's more like um, it's it's a more of an innocent kind of subtle and and, and, and refined sort of uh, romance and love you know it's not like this cheesy dribbly you know um, way of uh, way of going about things you know it's actually sincere and it's it's um, it's authentic okay so um, <clears throat> anyone you know anyone can read this book it's not a hard read although one thing I can say is that uh, Marquez likes to be very, very descriptive, and his sentences, in this sense, seem to go on uh, for quite a long time. So, just if you are going to read it, pay attention to the sentences and don't lose yourself along the way. Uh, that's one thing which I had to catch myself continually was just keeping uh, a hold of his train of thoughts and not just slipping and, and going uh, backwards a little bit. Um, but his style of writing is, is is exceptional. You know, he's 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 beautifully descriptive. You know, he paints these beautiful, beautiful pictures. And these uh, stunning kind of portraits of, of, of everyday life, you know, he's actually just a master of, of writing. And you can tell because uh, the way he uses his, uh, his words and his, his tongue and his language is the way that a, a master painter uses his brush and his strokes and his canvas. Okay, so um, Marquez is, is excellent at this. Um, one thing which uh, I will uh, also mention is... Um, without without uh, uh, leaving you guys like this, I will mention that you should not sleep on secondhand bookstores. Okay, my book is falling apart unfortunately. However, um, it served its purpose. You know what I mean? I picked it up for like two dollars fifty at a book at a bookstore, at like a Lifeline. So there's no reason why anyone anybody else couldn't pick it up as well. You know, and uh, don't sleep on your local bookstores. You know, your secondhand bookstores. Uh, in my eyes, they're like a treasure chest that just are waiting to be discovered. And um, they're always, they're always placed in really kind of obscure parts of your city, so you can have a lot of fun uh, navigating these kind of areas. And, um, you know, at least I do, you know, maybe maybe because I'm a weirdo and, you know, proud of that. <laughs> However, um, yeah, everybody should have a good time doing it. So, um, just to wrap things up, uh, Love in the Time of Clara, excellent, excellent book. 
pure romance, not corny, not dribbly. I'm not going to rate it any stars because I'm just doing this for the sake of sharing. You know, I'm not going to critique it or anything along those lines. You know, if I felt if I feel there are faults in this book, I will mention them. However, for the most part, I think it's a pretty pretty well written book, and that's why it's been received globally so well. Um, so yeah, I just hope uh, you guys have enjoyed what I've just been saying, and you know, have have uh, have, have I've convinced you to kind of pick it up yourself, or have at least um, made you consider reading it yourself because um, it's a great 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 read. So I um, hope everyone has a great day and uh, thanks for listening guys. Okay, have a good one, yeah?